It's California edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We're coming to you from the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. We are inside the Cannon House office building with Lucille Royboy Allard. She is a member of the U.S. Congress. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Happy to be here. I want to speak with you about gun control, if we may. Uh, we're both from the Los Angeles area, and I think it's fair to say that when you speak with Angelinos, uh, the notion of background checks seems very intuitive. The notion that there would not be background checks at gun shows is surprising. And I think we don't realize that, you know, the, the country's not just Los Angeles. It's the rest of the nation. And so could you give us a sense of the politics of gun control in the nation's capital with 435 members? Well, I think what, what's happened is because of the differences in the country, uh, there are many hunters, many who, who really uh, need uh, their guns because they go, they hunt, and they right. use that food to bring home. So there's this tremendous fear that if there's any kind of gun control legislation that passes, that it's going to infringe on their rights to have guns. And that really is a misconception. It is not true. What the uh, gun legislation that unfortunately uh, did, did not pass. as we know it. Yes. Uh, is simply a common sense approach to preventing those who should not be able to get guns through background checks, preventing them from getting guns, while at the same time protecting the rights of law-abiding uh, gun owners. So, but there's a lot of uh, fear and uh, misinformation that is out there. But what's so interesting is you look at public opinion polls and you see 90% support expanded background checks. And yet in the Senate, it did get 55%, it needed 60%. Some members of the Senate from purple states have been lambasted for their opposition to Manchin Toomey. But yet the NRA recently had a convention, they were invigorated, they were fired up. So do you see progress on gun control? And I ask you specifically, you represent a fairly urban district that in various parts is torn up by gang violence, gun violence? Yes, and in fact, gun violence and uh, people being killed in, in Los Angeles because of drive-by shootings is not uncommon. Right. But, but it, it goes back again to, to the fact that politics is local. It is. And many of the senators who opposed the, uh, the gun, uh, anti-gun bill uh, really were concerned about their re-election. And it had to do with, with that more than the merits of the issue in terms of ground, uh, background checks. Now, but if in the wake of that vote, we have seen members who were concerned about their re-elections, their poll numbers have dropped. Kelly Ayotte from New Hampshire, Jeff Flake from Arizona, Mark Begich, a Democrat from Alaska. I mean, it does seem that there are consequences. Right. That's why I think it was a miscalculation mm. on the part of, of the senators. Because historically, if they voted against the NRA, they lost. I think what has happened is that now with what happened in uh, Newtown, Connecticut, and the public sentiment changing, just the opposite is happening. So I'm hopeful that because of this change in sentiment, that in fact, uh, at least background checks is not a dead issue, but that it is going to come back and that we're going to be able to pass it. In the House of Representatives? That's going to be, that's going to be our biggest challenge, is going to be in the House of Representatives. But I can tell you, I'm sure that my colleagues are taking note of what is happening in the Senate with uh, the, the uh, support right. of candidates going down. Her name is Lucille Royball Allard. My name is Brad Pomerantz. This is California Edition.